Welcome to Airborne Flight Training, coming up on this week's episode. JetBlue eyes military rotor pilots for fresh faces. Air Force aims to keep aviators with demo fiscal year 23 retention program. Worsening pilot shortage threatens Canadian Essential Air Service. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to Airborne Flight Training, a weekly program dedicated to future aviators and aviation professionals. Airborne Flight Training is brought to you in part by King Schools. King Schools has been leading the effort in producing expert aviation training programs and computer-based learning software for nearly 50 years. Find out why pilots love King Teaching at kingschools.com. Now let's get into today's stories. JetBlue eyes military rotor pilots for fresh faces. Its eighth program under the Gateway series of initiatives, this time taking aim at military pilots of rotary wing aircraft as a base of future company pilots. The Gateway Rotor Transition Program offers a, quote, prescribed talent pathway, end quote, for trained military helo personnel, allowing them to, quote, transition their existing expertise as helicopter pilots and acquire the necessary skills and certifications needed to join the JetBlue, transition their existing expertise as helicopter pilots and acquire the necessary skills and certifications needed to join JetBlue as a first officer, end quote. Accepted candidates obtain a conditional job offer prior to beginning their focused rotor transition program, eventually proceeding directly into the jetway as a newly minted first officer trainee after completing their syllabus and experiential requirements. In order to facilitate the training process, the company partnered with Sky Warrior Flight Training of Pensacola, Florida. The school will allow pilots to be, quote, immersed into JetBlue procedures, philosophy, and operations, end quote. The program is open for business already, with JetBlue looking to immediately fill a limited number of spots in the first Gateway RTP class to start in fall 2023. Expecting success, the company says it plans to scale up the program in the future. And coming up after the break, Allegiant Air ratifies two-year contract extension with Teamsters. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. I think it's a very important thing to share the joy and love of flying. Our customers fly to remote places. They use our products to go places that are difficult to get to. Hearts has been an excellent partner for Whip Air, uh, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demands. And it is that shared experience and the joy of flying that brings us all back and charges all of our batteries up. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Allegiant Air ratifies two-year contract extension with Teamsters. Allegiant Air ratified a new contract agreement with a two-year extension to the union's collective bargaining agreement, affecting the carrier's line and heavy maintenance technicians, stores employees, and a core of administrators in the field. The new contract was ratified by Allegiant personnel to the tune of 75.5%, representing the majority of the company's 683 maintenance personnel. The ratified agreement provides significant increases in rates in addition to the two-year extension, bringing the new amendable date to October 31, 2028. ATI again fails to fill flight deck vacancies. According to ALPA, for the second consecutive month, Air Transport International has failed to fill pilot-in-command vacancies left by extraordinary levels of pilot attrition. Year-to-date, the Wilmington, Ohio headquartered cargo air carrier has accepted no fewer than 155 resignations, a figure representing fully 29 percent of the company's pilot cadre. Notwithstanding ATIs having awarded PIC upgrades to new hires with little or no Boeing 767 flight experience, the air carrier missed its staffing goal by upwards of 33 percent, filling only 67 percent of available PIC vacancies. Sporties offers new folding knee desk. Sporties has shown off its new aviator workstation in the form of a lap-bound organizer, offering a stiff metallic 9x8-inch surface. The metal bifold lap desk allows pilots and passengers to put that open thigh space to use with a folding knee-mounted workplace for charts, notes, and devices. The lap desk features a clamp on the right side for keeping maps and papers in position during the flight, with the powder-coated steel board allowing the use of placement magnets anywhere else. 
United Airlines pledges over $1 million to aviation and STEM education. United Airlines has pledged $1.25 million to the funding of aviation and science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education in schools across the airline's seven hub locales, Chicago, Denver, D.C., New York, Houston, San Francisco, and L.A. The airline will also help fund aviation and STEM curricula in Phoenix and across Hawaii. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Air Force aims to keep aviators with demo fiscal year 23 retention program. The U.S. Air Force has published its 2023 Rated Officer Retention Demonstration Program, which could provide up to $50,000 a year for select aviators, with service commitments expiring in fiscal year 24-25 when they re-up. The National Defense Reauthorization Act directed the USAF to put a demo program into place in a modest effort to retain some of the military's most expensive trained talent before cutting them loose to considerable profit in the civilian world. The result is a tiered monetary incentive available to those under undergraduate flying training active duty service commitments expiring in fiscal year 2024 or 2025, the opportunity to sign a contract, quote, for up to $50,000 a year depending on length of the contract, end quote. The offer as it stands expires on the last day of 2028, but USAF Brass has said that it could, quote, potentially continue with higher funding allocation requests in future years, end quote, to meet additional fields or longer periods. As with any military retention deal, there's some fine print to be aware of. The gist of things is that the, quote, highest monetary incentive amounts will be offered only to aviators who sign a contract three fiscal years prior to the fiscal year their UFT ADSC expires, end quote. The monetary amounts will be tiered thereafter. Coming up after these messages, worsening pilot shortage threatens Canadian Essential Air Service. If it looks good, it usually flies good. The Bristel series of aircraft is proof of that. Furthering their legacy of safety and efficiency, Bristel is proud to feature the Rotax 915 IS Turbo in the current lineup of aircraft. The 915 IS Turbo Power Plant offers more power than ever before in a light sport aircraft. Learn more about Bristel at www.sportflyingusa.com. Throughout the globe, Piper Aircraft has hand-selected the very best in company representation, service, and support. From first inquiry to acquisition to product support, Piper Aircraft ownership is seamless and worry-free. Piper Aircraft authorized dealers, factory trained, factory connected. Welcome back. Worsening pilot shortage threatens Canadian Essential Air Service. Canada's Edmonton Flying Club in 2023 is struggling to pair students with instructors. New students, in fact, can expect to spend approximately nine months on a wait list prior to starting private pilot training. Pre-COVID, Transport Canada issued some 1,100 private pilot certificates annually. In 2020, the agency issued fewer than 500 such certificates. In 2021, the number dipped below 300, and in 2022, across the whole of Canada, only 238 pilot certificates of any kind were issued. Alberta's Ministry of Advanced Education has promised $11 million in aviation support over the next three years. A portion of the monies will be allocated to the creation of a new bursary for pilot training. Additionally, Alberta's government has committed some $73 million to the bolstering of the province's aviation and tourism industries. Despite the provincial government's investment in future initiatives, McGill University lecturer and aviation management expert John Gradeck insists Canadian regional air carriers are in desperate need of immediate support. The industry segment that's being hit the hardest is small regional carriers and northern Canadian traffic, and what I would call the entry-level domain for pilots because the airlines are consuming that resource very quickly." End quote. Gradex suggested extant pilot shortages will worsen and expects smaller communities throughout Canada's northern provinces and territories to see the summary suspension of aviation services. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.